Hey friends, Kevin here, and today we're going to bring you a tour of someone else's rig. And this gentleman's been doing this for about three years now. And the first couple of years was in a converted pickup truck, a truck bed and all that good stuff. Now he's in a 6x12 travel trailer that he bought new and converted out himself. So we're going to talk to him and see what he did, how he did it, why he did it what he likes about the build he did and what he might change later on now that he's he's had some time in here. So tell us a little bit about your home on wheels. Well, it's a it's a 2018 Homesteader brand cargo trailer. Um bought it new last year around about April. I've been doing things in a tent just to see if I was going to like doing this life, and turns out I did. So um, mm -hmm. I looked at different campers, different vans, and the cam even the brand new campers nowadays, they are just made so cheap that right. I'm like, I'm not going to sink that kind of money in, you know, and I didn't need that kind of room. It's just me. Plus, I like to do things different. I, li I like to go against the the current so to speak so I went with a travel trailer one piece of advice if you're gonna do this I bought mine with you know the bar that comes across and you lack lock it that way don't do that buy the, buy it with the RV door or the RV lock already built into it so put that little lock in yourself especially out with nothing but a battery drill because it's, it's thin material that yes, you're having to deal with on that side on door. door. Yes. And the doors behind you are the two flip two open, barn complete doors, barn yes. doors, back doors. Uh, and right now I've got, you know, I screened this in so that in the summer months, I can back up to the lake like we are now. I can open those doors and I've got a massive, just beautiful picture window. Right. Um but bugs nice. out and a nice breeze coming in. Right, and not to mention the view. You can just kick back and you've got that framed in for you. In a way, it is a little bit of wasted space, but it is nice. It's nice. You know, it's a nice little focal point. That's what you live for is being able to pull up to whatever it is and just flip doors open and go, ah. Oh. Right. You know, during the summer months, I can kick back on that little bench there, the door shut, fan or AC on, and I've got the view of the lake and the eagles and all that stuff. So I'm going to do just a quick little circle here real quick, kind of front to back to show this, since that is the back where your bed is. You have lights built in. TV and DVD player. Mm -hmm. And the antenna control box is on that little oh, upper okay. shelf. It has an antenna outside that will f go 360 degrees to tune things in. All this cabinet space he put in here himself, which is nice. Microwave, air conditioner over top. And this is the part that I really like. You come in here of course, it's winter time. It's cold tonight, so you have this heater and tank in the way. But he has all this empty floor space, and still yet has all of this cabinet space. Yeah, normally. And this big L-shaped countertop. Normally, everything's uh, in its place. You know, you. Put your pots and pans. And a good back. size fridge. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but because of winter time with with the heater and all that in here, I took everything out and set it up to out so I'm not having to move the heater and get to everything. But yeah, that's just a standard dorm room fridge with a freezer section on top. Uh, bought it at Walmart. Well, like you said, even that freezer section, it's pretty good size, and I mean. Oh, I can put seven hungry man dinners. This in freezer thing. section is bigger than the coolers that a lot of the ice coolers that a lot of people are using. 
I think, if I remember correct, this is the 3.2 cubic foot mini fridge. The, the part that really blows everybody's mind with this, everything you see here was actually built in this camp spot with nothing but a hand saw and a battery drill. So it can be done. I don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> now, this was over, of course, this wasn't winter time too when you did this. No, but. this was in the summer. Um, and the reason I don't recommend doing it, one, the rangers get a little upset at you. Yeah. But I kept everything clean. Yeah. Even, even battery operated tools. This is something you want to do at a time that there's not a lot of people around or you can get away from people because right. if full campground, even little black and decker battery operated saws and things because i've had them before they're pretty high pitch like, yeah. and people come out here to enjoy right they, and not watch right. some crazy guy oh we're building a dang camper i built the countertop i didn't buy that countertop like that um i bought this the four foot by eight foot sheet of melamine and the four foot by eight foot sheet of formica and actually made my own countertop so this kind of layout would certainly work for weekenders or vacationers because it's working for you year round yeah i mean as far as functionality and all oh. when it's not winter time of oh. course i've got all kinds of shelf storage in here i've got my electrical behind there with box storage and stuff Pots and pans. And your bed is basically, you said, a it's full size side. wide, but right. you had to cut it down a little bit because it's right. only six foot wide. Full size wide still will fit a couple. Right. In addition to having all kinds of space for wall decoration. It's still a work in progress. Is this, this matching bench? Yeah. I did my Martha Stewart on sewing that. It's not bad, but oh, yeah. it, it was something that was thrown together in a pinch. But for fast and simple, and if somebody comes over and you have you know bad weather and you invite somebody in for a cup of coffee and to sit right. around, you know, you've got room for a couple of people to, to be able to sit here. Right, and I put that little folding table there out, sit there and have dinner. Doing this out in the woods, kind of with just your hand tool and I guess a couple of battery powered tools or whatever, how long did it take you to do this? Two and a half, three months. That was working on it a little bit at a time. A little bit at it. I had, I had one spell of almost two weeks with nothing but solid rain where I couldn't do anything. Um, then rain off and on. So, and that's why some of the stuff didn't turn out, you know, like I didn't get all this very good. Like, I know I'm capable of because I would go buy a couple hundred dollars worth of building material because the weather people said it was going to be pretty. And five hours later, I'm having to scramble to <laughs> put everything in somewhere dry. Right. If the weather had cooperated and you had had everything piled up, laid out outside, how long would it have taken you? With the back issues I have, a week. Anybody that doesn't have a bad back and has access to tools and is in the dry, yeah. you can do this in two or three days. Yeah. The young people that yeah, haven't people. that haven't blown their backs out yet. Right. You can yeah. do this easily in two to three days. I mean, I love the layout, but I've had it for a year now. So I've noticed some things that I would do different. And, you know, everything's a trade-off. Absolutely. Having these barn doors here. I can open them up and put a curtain rod between them and I've got my shower stall. But having the barn doors, I had to put the air conditioner there, which as you see, all of that is basically wasted space. That could be storage. So I'm kind of torn back and forth between taking the barn doors off and building this a solid wall and putting the air conditioner there. That way the air flows but then you lose that view on those nice places. I lose the view. I lose the shower stall. Um, but I do gain a little storage. So 
one of those things. Do I need the storage that bad? Uh, so you're just using a pump up shower. Yes. System, right? Yeah. And like you said, you can open those doors, stick a rod in between, throw whatever over there for a curtain, and right. and you're showering right beside your vehicle, right beside, which is what I do in the small van. Right. And this time of year, you know, I still have that that pump up shower in this one because where we're at right now, I have to have this thing memor winterized. Right. You know, so my tanks and things are empty, even though I have a little better shower set up in the big van. I can't use it right now until I go back into some warmer climate. So right. the pump up shower it is. I, I try to stay close to places that we can go shower like here. But I do love going way out away from everything and everybody. And that's I've got a shower tent, but. If you can get to where I just open those doors and there's my shower, I still got to put windows in here. Um, that's that's a definite. I mean, I could have bought it with the windows in, but I got such a good deal on this trailer that I'm like, I'll, I'll buy them, put them in later, not knowing how expensive those things are. <laughs> oh, nice lights across the top there too. <laughs> And I put a dimmer switch on these lights. Oh. But windows I gotta do. I've gotta do a kitchen faucet and I'm torn between just putting my one of my seven gallon jugs under the sink and having my faucet come pump straight from there or putting an actual tank underneath. I'm leaning more toward the seven gallon jug underneath because like we've had some pretty cold weather here and right. if I'm back on this side you know like you said you have to win yeah and just for a little bit of dishwashing and hand washing i think that's i think that's fine so you'd have a window on each side and we were talking about this the other day now not having windows now like everything else there's pros and cons to which way you go with it right so, i can escape the world when there's tons of people out there i can escape the world into my own own little private seclusion in here but if you hear a noise outside you either got a man up and go out and see or roll back over and go to sleep and say <laughs> fall where they may they make an rv door that has the built-in screen door i'm going to end up getting that um because that little screen right there that thing is it gets annoying when you start trying to carry stuff in and out You've got so much cabinet space in here. And you know, we have about the same amount of space in that large white van that you do in this. If they were, had both started out empty. Right. And there's, there's a lot of, a lot of cool features in that custom made van, but there's places in here. I mean, right down the center, you have more open space than I have in that custom road trek. Well, and you have more, and you actually have more cabinet, cabinet space, and you actually have more counter space. <laughs> so there, there are some advantages to, to this. Um, another change I'm definitely going to make is add cabinetry down this side on the top, oh. but add a range hood exhaust vent. Okay. Um, because... With this little butane stove I've got, it's not an issue of it heating the ceiling up. But if I use like a two burner Coleman stove, it really heats that ceiling up. So, plus, you know, Martha Stewart, I'm not, so I tend to smoke my camper up. You know, that way I could suck the smoke out and I don't have to open the door and all that stuff. And I've been... I've been researching that Chinese diesel heater. I really think that thing would be great in here. Yeah. You know, that that would take get rid of all of that mess. Um, right, of having the big propane <laughs> tank right, sitting yeah, in the way. That's just that takes up all your space. Yeah. Turn it on, get it hot in here, and then turn it off and go to sleep. Like you said, a little diesel one could go under this bench or under your bed or whatever, and it right. just freeze all that all that up. Freeze all that up. Well, it just hit me one of the things I wanted to show you because sometimes the simple solutions are the best ones to things. Check this out, Dave. Explain your bathroom scale. Oh, that's just a little five dollar set of bathroom scales. 
I've met everybody. Oh, I don't know how much propane's in my tank. I get these little gauges from Harbor Freight. I get you a set of bathroom scales and set it on it. You just set it on it and weigh it. On the side of the tank, around the handle, you will see the letters TW and a number. Stamped in somewhere in that area. Yeah, stamped yeah. in. Um, whatever that, t that TW stands for, tear weight. That one is... Uh, got a TW of 17. So that means that tank empty weighs 17 pounds. Whatever you have in there, that number is subtract 17, and that's how much propane right. you have left. When, when you, so anytime, you can just walk by and glance at it and know. Right. Yeah. If it's full, it's 34 pounds. So I know when I get down close to 17 pounds, Around 20 pounds, if it's going to be real cold at night, I'll go ahead and go exchange. Yeah, it looks like you're you're around 30 pounds now. And again, this was just done a couple of days ago. Right. And we've had it, but it has been cold, so you have used a little propane. But yeah, that's <laughs> the, the simple stuff is the best sometimes. Closing thought, would you buy one of these again? Oh, absolutely. It's, Absolutely. It has worked for you for a year and a half, and it's going, can keep working for you for years. Absolutely. And, um, like I said, I bought this one with the rounded front because I got it brand new, and I got it at such a deal that I was I was an idiot not to buy it. Now, had I... Uh, and your had, rounded front is what, you can see why it's rounded in the corners. Right. The way you had to do this. Well, that one is in here, and the other one's hidden inside of your cabinet on this yes, side. Yes, and there's also two of them back here that's hidden. I framed in around it. Oh. See, that metal come from the manufacturer like that. Okay. It comes with 3 8 inch thick plywood on the walls, and then all four corners have that rounded. But if I had it to do over again, I would have bought the V-nose hull. Because you would have this, but then it would come together at a V up there. That I probably could have put a shower stall in the 7 foot by 14 foot V nose. You can have that whole front there as a bathroom. And have all this. And you would have the full size length of an actual full size bed. And in case you're wondering why I have that ceramic tile there. That buddy heater puts out a lot of heat down toward the floor. That ceramic tile there protects my floor gets the front that little space it gets your floor the longer you run it really 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 hot so i put that little ceramic tile down there to protect my floor so that is good to know pick one of those up for a couple bucks at a lose or somewhere and yeah that's all i did yeah. but a bigger one's really not necessary no i mean i uh. i well I've been snowed on quite a few times so far with it to where that I've been stuck inside here for, you know, a couple of weeks because of the weather. I've been comfortable. I kick back and watch TV and I've got plenty of room to change and to eat and to cook. And bigger is always better, supposedly. But then again, bigger it is, the harder it is to get into places. That's what I was yeah. going to say. I can take this little trailer. And I can pull it into any truck stop, gas station. It it tracks real easy. Also, I don't need any help backing it. Because it's so small, you can see everything. That's you a can good put point. this thing anywhere as you want it with no trouble whatsoever. The reason I went so much with this one is I got it for like twenty five hundred bucks. Brand new. Um it's every two foot on centers is an actual one inch by two inch steel beam. Not steel aluminum. beam. Yeah, not aluminum. Yeah. This one, this trailer, when I bought it empty, was almost 1,400 pounds. Now, I could have bought an aluminum one for several hundred dollars more, a whole lot lighter weight, but this thing ain't going to bend. You know, I've got steel beams all across the floor. In the walls and in the ceiling. All right. And when you mount stuff, screw stuff to that steel beam, it's pretty much there. 
Whereas, you know, with aluminum, you know, after a couple of years, you, you get a lot of trouble with the aluminum. Well, I appreciate your time. I think a lot of people looking and trying to figure out what they want to do will get some good ideals of this as a, as a possibility if they're looking to pull something behind them and something they can drop in a campground and, oh, yeah. and then take their, you know, whatever they're using to pull this out exploring by itself. I, oh, yeah. I was pulling it with a four-cylinder Toyota Tacoma. Really? Four-wheel drive. And it towed it with no trouble. And I still tow it with a full four cylinder now. Um, just truck. a Chevrolet now. Yeah, just yeah. a Chevrolet now. Tows real easy. I've not had any trouble with it. And the stuff I've got built in here will outlast any RV. That I have no doubt of, seeing how, how a lot of RVs are made and how their cabinets and stuff are made and... I went in a three hundred thousand dollar motor home out in Arizona at the big tent. I don't know where they justify putting that kind of price tag on that because they literally had just like paneling for shelves. And I'm like, Well, I can break that. Give me a couple cans of beefaroni and that thing's toast. Make it look good, shove a big screen TV in the corner and a little two hundred dollar electric fireplace and people are going Ooh. Yeah. I've had people come up to me out here and they're like camping in that and i'm like yeah and i open the door and they're just like you where's this room cut this is a six by 12 yeah. trailer that i haul a lawn mower in and that's why i wanted to show the inside of this first and i'm going to do one more quick 360 just around here because i'm going to finish this video more or less by doing the outside because this is so much bigger and so much more spacious in here than you think it's going to be when you see see the outside of this unit. And it's much, it, much more. It's, it's about six foot high inside here. Much appreciated. Much appreciated. No problem. Yeah. Generator going making a little bit of noise, but that's Dave set up from the outside. Travel trailer.